Good morning and welcome as we get together on this Sunday morning and as we prepare our hearts and minds, let us go to God in prayer. God of possibilities, fill us with your hope and faithfulness. Listen to us as we pour out our souls before you. Grant us the grace to be your people and to live your teachings. Live in us that we may arise with hope and walk in love. We lift up all of these things as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's affirmation of faith is an affirmation from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 6 and Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 20. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. At this time, as we gather together, let us take a few moments and to remember names and situations that we lift up with our joys and concerns. And we will have a brief moment of silent prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark in chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And that, and, and what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus' conversation found in the beginning of today's reading was hard to hear and hard to understand for the disciples who sat with Jesus so long ago. In many ways, it is also hard for us to understand and hear these words. Jesus is describing the life that is to come for the disciples and for those that, that will follow. His attention is not to scare the disciples, but to prepare them and help them understand that there are certain things that are important as he prepares to leave. As a man sat next to his friend in the ICU and watched him take his last few breaths in this life, 
He remembered about the many gifts and graces his friend offered during their friendship. He had given so much to the church, to the community, to his family, and to his friends. In many ways, the man felt as though his friend and he understood this world from a similar view. In addition, they had served together and worshipped together and met together on many occasions. They had become good friends, and he was someone that was respected and admired. There are many moments in life, and one of the most holy is that time when a person leaves this physical life and goes on to life eternal. In that moment, God is truly present. In that time, the man said several things to his friend that should have been shared years in advance and prayed with him more than once during those last few hours. Maybe there is freedom in that holy space to open up to what God has in store and what God is doing in the here and now. As Jesus tells his disciples goodbye and prepares for the trials and persecutions that are to come, there are many things that Jesus thinks are important to share before he goes. Maybe it is the holiness of the moment as they sit together, or maybe it is clarification about what God will do. Jesus tells of the destruction that will come and the trouble that will face the people of this earth. But he also gives his friends some words of advice. Jesus tells the disciples to be aware and to watch out for those who will try to take the name of Christ and lead the dis disciples astray. Jesus knows that the disciples have been dependent upon him and he worries about their future. Out of this care and concern, Jesus tells them to keep the teachings and the path that he has set before them and that no matter what destruction or persecution may come, to remain faithful to his guidance. Jesus has many talks with his disciples and friends, and many of these are about future things that will happen. In Mark chapter 13, it is unique in the information that is presented surrounding the temple and the end times. The destruction of the temple is often seen as an illusion to the passion of Christ just a few chapters away. In this case, however, Jesus is telling about things that will not be seen in this life, but rather things that are to come in the fullness of time. Why would Jesus make such a point of this? Maybe it is to warn the disciples and to give them the best chance possible with what will come. One way we can pass on what is most important to us in life is to consider the world after our time in it has passed and consider what we can and should do to help those who will remain here after. Some people in the secular world think of this in terms of leaving a personal legacy that people can remember and look up to. But for the Christian... We already have the legacy to admire. Our job is to help persons see that legacy more clearly by what we offer during our life. One of the things the man appreciated most about his friend is that you never question what he was thinking or believing. He said things clearly, and a person never wondered where he stood or what he thought. It is because of this that although his friend is no longer with us here in this life, there is no question about what was important to him. He spent life pointing others to Christ and to the important things in life, and he left a legacy, not of himself, but of God's work of love. Jesus wants to remind and encourage and warn the disciples and us that there are many opportunities to hear legacies and create legacies that will draw us off course from where God intends for us to be. But when we follow the legacy of Jesus Christ, we can weather the storms and trials that come, and we can move forward in faith. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today, and as we get ready to go our separate ways and begin a new week, let us go to God in prayer. Today, brothers and sisters, let us go in peace, encouraging one another in love and looking with hope for the kingdom of God. Amen.